Oh, check these four puddles. Oh no. Oh, oh Ubisoft had a clear and lofty goal in mind as they built Far Cry 4, create the most authentic gaming experience ever. The dedicated developers in Montreal were step one. Immersion in the game's inspiration, the Himalayas, was step two. It was imperative to see the people, places, and things that would help bring this game to life. Nepal all suggests like a lot of different kinds of environments, right? How are you gonna feel going from sort of the virtual world that you have created? into the new world that we're going to. In my head, I have this Wikipedia idea of what Nepal is. I've been reading about what makes it the way it is right now, what's been happening over the last 10 years, the last thousand years. But I'm, I'm hoping that we can uncover something uh, that isn't presented on the web. The expectations are going to be super high after Far Cry 3. We've got, we really want to push it and bring it to the next level. It's super important that the environment you're in feels believable, like you can look around and understand the space and it feels like uh, a real place from the real world. So being able to go to some of those locations is super, super interesting and super useful just to see how the ground crunches under your feet and just the tiny little textures like that and we can try and bring that extra level of uh, authenticity to it. Arriving in Kathmandu was intense. The end of the Nepali Civil War meant a mass migration into the city, and with it came mass pollution, overpopulation, and the sense that an ancient city wasn't ready for modernity to be thrust upon it. Everyone seemed to be experiencing that sensory overload, too. It's visually super noisy. I'm having trouble processing everything that I'm seeing because I'm trying to remember it all. And like I'm like, that's useful. Well, that's super useful. That post is incredible. That text is awesome. Right now, I'm just like, I'm just trying to absorb it all. Local rumor had it that an animal sacrifice was going to be happening to appease the gods after the monsoon, or maybe just to appease the gods in general. It was sort of unclear. But Nepal has strong ties to its past, so attending an animal sacrifice is significant in understanding traditional Nepali culture. It was a perfect introduction to the country. <laughs> So we've made it to Dakshina Kali Temple, where the goddess Kali asks for blood sacrifice from her devotees. Is that faces? A face only a Kali could love. So we're going to follow them to the altar where that goat will be sacrificed to slake the thirst of Kali. It was certainly a normal cultural moment. But for a second, everything got pretty quiet. I was expecting like a clean cut, but the whole like slice and then guide. It's been super interesting to get this close to the source material. It's like it's the kind of experience that we can, that we can never normally get. Uh, and I haven't had working on the game before. I, d I didn't realize the significance of bells, especially around temples and places of worship. In my head before I went, I had this like very uh, stereotypical kind of soundscape of what a place of worship sounded like. I think what we'll end up with is something that's less, less like a, like a stock movie soundtrack kind of vibe, and we'll, we'll capture something that's much more, much more realistic. After a brief foray into animal sacrifice, a small plane was taken to Pokhara, a town famous for both being a gateway to the Himalayan highlands and the home base for Nepal's legendary fighting Gurkha. The legend of the Gurkha inspired the warriors created in the game. <laughs> One, 
The young Gurkhas in training gave a sense of what the challenges and motivations were to join one of the world's most elite fighting forces. They were established by the British Empire in the mid-19th century, and have fought alongside British Special Forces ever since. It's often said, if a man says he's not afraid of dying, he's either lying or is a Gurkha. Mark and Phil, you guys studied Gurkhas a lot as you were developing the game, right? Yeah. And so what is it like now actually meeting young dudes who are trying to be Gurkhas? It's, it's interesting to meet the, the personalities behind that, just to see how dedicated uh, people are to actually achieving that. Like they'll try, uh, these guys will try year after year after year to, uh, to get in. The de dedication is it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. I have been trying British Army for four times and this is my last time. Gurkhas are very closely associated with the Kukuri, a curved do-it-all weapon that's been referred to as the Gurkha blade. Kukuri is a little funny. But I didn't have to come up with a big one. Kukuri is a little funny. 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 Just a few years ago, a retired Gurkha successfully fought off 40 thieves who had hijacked a train, killing three of them and seriously injuring eight others with just a kukuri. It's also the primary blade used in Far Cry 4. We will die for Gorkhas if we are selected for British Army Gorkha. It was becoming apparent that pride came with being a native of the Himalayas. As the journey continued towards the Gorilla Trail, the roads were getting narrower and more perilous. The conversations with the young Gurkhas weighed heavily on everyone's minds. There was a looming sense that an intense few days were to come as the developers were going to meet the real people behind the game they wanted to create. People whose lives had been torn apart by the Civil War. For the, the past six months, we've been looking at reference like videos, images. What you see on those images is just static. So it doesn't show like the action. It doesn't show what's happening behind the scenes. Whether it's in Kathmandu or whether it's up in the mountains, there's always something that you need to look out for. That kind of comes into that, that danger factor where you're never sure what you're gonna see, what you're gonna hear, what you're gonna encounter. For me, this is, this is truly awesome because that's basically the game that we're trying to build. We want the, the player to be kind of surprised on every corner to see something, want to get there, uh, but never really sure of what, what he's going to find. Kurat is the fictional Himalayan region that Far Cry 4 was tentatively using to describe its environment. The topography played well into informing how the game would be built. Right, we're really big at giving options to the player. Basically, it's your game, your way. So you can go anywhere, approach any situation from any angle, use any type of weapons. So like having those footpaths go on or, or that main road, you could drive up and drive and shoot, basically, if you wanted. A thing in the trees sounds like some kind of high-pitched electrical whir from a distance. But then up close, it was just horrible. We should try and figure out a way to put that in the game somewhere. It just makes you wonder what's inside that jungle. Yeah. <laughs> death. I don't want to see it. Yeah, death, probably. Death. Yeah. But yeah, the view from here is pretty amazing. We're just looking at those terraces over there. That's really the kind of feeling that we want to get. We want to get out of the standard uh, lush forest. This really stands out to me. And now we're just approaching the temple. And I can't wait to just hear and see it from up close. We're going to go inside the temple and maybe underground also in the game. So I really want to see how it looks from all its angles. The Tal Bahari Temple is located in the middle of Lake Fiwa. It's a traditional ancient structure with an unknown history, just the kind of setting that the developers were looking for. It's super interesting to see how the traditions kind of sustain and survive. It's not just the place itself that has this spirit, it's the people as well. They still believe it, they still carry on these traditions. Whereas back home we kind of dispose of things much more quickly. Whereas everything here seems to, uh, even if people don't know why they do it, like they still do it, just because they're carrying on their tradition. It's kind of cool just to get that level of detail. And a lot of it's just bizarre juxtaposition, which I think is going to be kind of cool to try and bring some of that into the game. I think it's going to give a weird irreverence, which I think is always something we look for in a Far Cry game. Coming back here and just having a slideshow and showing people pictures, yeah, that's good. But then 
explaining them like in detail how it was to be there and see those things, I think that's really where uh, it paid off. It was a break between filming. I remember I saw this, there was a little old woman sitting on a step. So I started filming her. She was just sharpening this thing on the step. And a few weeks ago, we were like, we need someone to give this mission. And I was like, I have her. So we're gonna use her as inspiration. And again, that was just a small little moment that like we've added in the game to give that clash of culture, kind of fish out of water experience. <laughs> All right, so we decided to take this trip on the roof, sort of Nepali style, see if we can take in some more of the scenery. We took this crazy Jeep ride on these death trap roads. And uh, I remember seeing people on these huge rickety buses and thinking, these, these people are insane. In the research I've done, I've seen that these buses crash every week. It's not even newsworthy, it happens all the time. There were some moments, like looking down, that I was really like, if the driver doesn't know what he's doing, like, or if I was driving, I'd probably be in the ditch, and I'd probably be either dead or almost dead, right? This is the perfect warm-up to a two-day trek. So on our way to the Gorilla Trail, we've come across a road that's been washed out by a giant avalanche. So we're gonna have to take it by foot on what looks like a pretty sketchy trail. There were a few times when I was pretty convinced we were all going to die. I was like, this is it. At least I'm going to die in a beautiful place. After the avalanche stricken road we've got on this van, and it's going to take us the rest of the way to the Gorilla Trail. You guys comfortable? Go get hot. With an exploration of Pokhara, the Gurkha, and the Temple Lake finished, the heart of the Himalayas was the next stop. The Gorilla Trail is what people now call the network of roads and mountain villages that the Maoist rebels used to hide and house their insurgency. Though the war has been over for several years, the region has only recently been deemed pacified enough for outsider travel. We got to the start of the Gorilla Trail, and immediately I was in the game. I felt like I was in Kirat. Uh, the landscape was perfect. Everything looked like the game I'd been playing. Um, and it was, it, was, it was an incredible feeling. We left civilization behind. So it looks like we made it up to at least the end of the ascent, but we still have about half an hour before we reach the village. Hopefully we can get there before the sun sets and have ourselves a nice little fucking rest. The first part of the trek had been treacherous, and leaving civilization for the next few days offered time to reflect on the sensory elements that could be brought into the game. The subtle moments encountered at the Bahari Temple and the feeling of tradition and spirituality were key in adding another layer to the trip. Spirituality would stay a continuing theme, taking a bizarre twist when experiencing some of Nepal's darker traditions. We were walking this trail with ex Maoist soldiers heading up to their remote village. It was spectacular, it was breathtaking. <laughs> This is Bobby, a former rebel soldier who served in the Nepalese Civil War, a bloody, protracted conflict that lasted from 1996 to 2006, pitting the Maoist rebels against the king's army. Though it would be a stretch to say the rebels were united by a Maoist ideology, they at least united under the banner of a better life for villagers. Yaman was the leader of a rebel unit and the head of his village. This is his home, where he held court over a long evening of conversation and the local Rukshi. Bulti 
Oftentimes in the games, we, especially when we construct the narrative, we really think about things from the protagonist's perspective. What was interesting to me was to meet the people who were affected by the war and just to hear their personal stories about how the, how the conflict affected their lives and, and moved them in different ways. if we're going to make a credible environment, not just make something like beautiful and three-dimensional, but to try and like to fill it with with life, to actually go and see the people who lived it, to have them welcome us into their homes and villages and get to experience their stories about their time in Nepal and to be able to like live with them. The things that we experience, like you wouldn't get them from anywhere else other than being on the ground and living it in the moment. It was an incredible experience. It was a strange return to Kathmandu for a final night and a visit to Pashupati Temple, one of Hinduism's holiest temples, and a place where people go to burn their dead. It quickly turned surreal. There were sadhus who spent decades living and worshipping at the temple, and bodies being cremated with ash pluming everywhere. The fires are really burning and it's like I'm breathing it in, but I know this is this is human ash and it's great. It's kind of overwhelming, it's very bizarre. And when we came back, we looked at the game and we were like, it felt cliche and there was something kind of artificial about it. So I think what we've been able to do is, is to share with the team the extra details to make it feel like a real place instead of like the Disneyland version um, of Nepal. Exiting the temple, the challenge of turning the incredible mysticism and stunning surrounding settings into a true-to-life gaming experience became very real. This was the cathartic element we were searching for, and it was found in Nepal's most far-flung regions and furthest corners.